Hey, thanks everybody. Uh, and thank you to AWS uh, and to McKenzie specifically. Uh, their support of us has been tremendous in getting started. Like AWS's startup support has been fantastic. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to visit the AWS startup loft yet, but uh, definitely want to check that out. So yeah, today I'm going to be talking to you a bit about Parsec. So that's the company I work for. Uh, so just first, who am I? I'm Dan Applegate. I'm a software engineer there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or on GitHub at Dan Applegate. Uh, if you want to ask any questions about anything I've talked about today, uh, feel free to shoot me a tweet. I'll try to answer. Also, uh, we'll have somebody in the audience, our CEO, Benji. He's over there. Uh, you can tweet at Parsec Team uh, any of your questions that you may have during the talk, and he'll try to answer after the fact, whatever. We'll also leave time for questions at the end. All right. So first of all, to give you a little context on what, par what Parsec actually is. So at Parsec, uh, we believe that we're kind of on the cusp of a major change in how people use technology, right? So we believe that uh, in the future, the whole model of individuals owning hardware is kind of going to go away, right? We feel like hardware is moving in this direction where everything is going to be on the cloud, right? Uh, instead of interacting with hardware that you personally own, you're going to interact with resources in the cloud that you're going to use uh, whenever you need them to. You're not going to have to invest hundreds or thousands of dollars into hardware throughout your lifetime. You're just going to pay for what you use, right? So one of the biggest sticking points for that is in gaming. Oh, is in gaming. Uh, because still to this day, uh, if you want to play the latest and greatest games at the highest resolutions, the maximum uh, frame rates and everything like that, you still have to shell out a couple thousand dollars for a high-end gaming PC you're going to have to install all these games. You're going to have to run them locally, and you're going to have to upgrade every. You're going to have to upgrade every every two years or so, right? So, we wanted to try to change that, right? We believe that there are tons of gamers out there who would love to game, uh, but they don't play enough to justify spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on gaming PCs. So we want to try to activate those those people, right? We want to try to reach out to those people and show them that they can play their favorite games, the latest and greatest games, as well just by leveraging the cloud. So up until now, one of the biggest sticking points for being able to do this in the cloud, to being able to play you know, first-person shooters, real-time games in the cloud has been latency, right? Now, when you're just playing on your, on your desktop, right, you've got your GPU sitting under your, under your desk, uh, the latency is only about five milliseconds. It's like lightning fast. It's not noticeable, right? Obviously, as you increase distance between the GPU and the monitor, that increases latency, right? Every time you click a mouse button, that signal's got to go all the way to the, to the PC. It's got to process the click. It's got to render the display and, and send it back to you. So the further away you are from a, from a data center, from your GPU, the harder it is to actually gain. The harder it is to get to that 60 frames per second uh, benchmark. And so you can see some of you may be saying, oh, this sounds really familiar. Like People have tried this before, right? And some of you may remember OnLive, which was a service back in 2007. And they tried to, they tried to do this, right? They tried to tackle this sort of cl cloud gaming market, right? And unfortunately, at the time, the technologies were just not there to support low latency gaming, uh, game streaming. And so at Parsec, what we've, what we've done is we've come up with a solution to cut away as much of the latency as we can to just render these you know, frames of these games at uh, the highest resolution that we can and just shoot them over the network as fast as we can, as little overhead as possible. And so we've managed to achieve uh, latencies even to a data center from New York to Virginia, where AWS has US East 1. We've managed to get down to latencies which are actually quite reasonable and at which you can play games like Overwatch, other first-person shooters uh, in real time, or what appears to be real time. And so we believe that the time is right right now uh, that all of these technologies have kind of are coming to a head, right? We're on this wave of technology that is just on the horizon that is coming into uh, common use right now. So there's four things that we, we see uh, that are kind of lending support to this, this idea. So one is that bandwidth is getting cheaper and cheaper. The number of gigabit uh, per second connections that are made available to you, you know, it used to be only your university could get a gigabit connection, right? Nowadays, you can get, in some locations, you can get 
you know, Google Fiber, you can get gigabit connections uh, in your home, right? So the cost of bandwidth is, is massively decreasing. Two is really key is hardware decoding. Uh, nearly every uh, physical GPU that every laptop, every you know, pre-built uh, gaming machine or non-gaming machine that is produced today will have some sort of hardware accelerated uh, video decoding. Okay? Uh, and what's next on the horizon is actually H.265, which is going to only decrease uh, the bandwidth required to stream video and increase uh, performance. Uh, three is that uh, obviously platform uh, as, as a service uh, providers like AWS uh, are investing heavily into GPUs, mostly driven by machine learning, right? Uh, lots of people want to run you know, with all of the investment and interest that's being generated in uh, machine learning. Uh, AWS and other providers are investing heavily into GPUs. So they're becoming cheaper, they're becoming more available in, in more data centers. So we feel like that's enabling us. And then four is obviously latency is big, uh, is largely affected by how far away from a data center you are. And AWS has made lots of uh, investments over the last few years to increase the global reach of their data centers. And so the closer you are to an AWS data center, the better your gaming experience on Parsec is gonna be. So all of these factors come together uh, to make us think that this is the right time for cloud gaming to really take off. All right, so that's, that's a little bit of background. Now I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about uh, what I do at Parsec, working on the infrastructure that supports these, these cloud gaming rigs. And uh, we maintain a global fleet of G2 and G3 instances. Uh, for those of you who don't know, G2 and G3 instances are AWS's EC2 instance types, which have direct access, uh, direct access to NVIDIA GPU cards. Uh, the G2 is a previous generation, came out around 2013. The G3 just came out a couple, uh, I think a couple of months ago, uh, and has the latest and greatest Tesla M60 card. Uh, so that gives us direct access to it. It's a super powered gaming machine that can run everything at like screaming resolutions and everything like that. So, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about uh, what we do, uh, how we use AWS to run these uh, G2 and G3 instances in the cloud and manage them and rent them out to our users. Uh, so first off, to start off with a goal, we really want this experience to be as seamless as possible. You know, gamers are not, they are not very interested in waiting. You know, they don't want to wait for uh, their game to load. They don't want to wait for their machine to start up. They just want to be into the experience. They want to game, they want it to be fast. They want it to be performance, everything like that. So we set a lot of ambitious goals for ourselves one of which was uh, the low latency. Uh, but also, when we're renting these cloud machines to these users, we want the experience to be as seamless as possible. So we set a goal for ourselves that we want this, we want a new user who joins up with Parsec to be able to launch and get into a high-powered gaming machine within a minute. Yeah. So I'll talk a little bit about a couple of the, uh, a couple of the problems that we encountered and the solutions that we, we uh, used on AWS to overcome this. Uh, so first of all, to give you a little overview of our, of our stack, uh, so we use AWS EC2. We run uh, Kubernetes, uh, a Kubernetes cluster to, manage, to run our website and our API uh, that runs our background processes that do billing, that do accounting, that uh, manage these servers and assign them to users. We also use RDS as our data store. So we use just RDS MySQL. It's been rock solid. It's been awesome. Uh, for logging, that's all on AWS. We use AWS Redshift, we use Kinesis Firehose into Redshift and into AWS Elasticsearch for real-time indexing of our logs. Makes it super powerful uh, and allows us to really pinpoint any sort of errors or exceptions that happen uh, in any sort of client that's trying to connect to a, to a Parsec server. Uh, and then finally, as I mentioned, our global G2 and G3 gaming fleet. So one of the problems, so here, the two problems that we, we encountered that we came up with uh, solutions for is, first of all, EC2 launch time. You all have probably experienced that it takes a few minutes for an EC2 instance to, to start up. And while it's, it's pretty fast and it's pretty impressive, uh, we wanted it to be faster. We wanted to get the experience uh, for our gamers uh, even quicker. And the second one, uh, which I didn't know about, but is actually quite, uh, quite uh, I, I guess, impactful, 
is uh, the fact that EBS sort of cold starts. There's this period of uh, reduced performance from your EBS volumes uh, when they are backed by a, uh, a snapshot, an S3 snapshot. We'll go into that in a second. But first for the EC2 launch times, so I ran a test. These are the eight regions that support G2 instances. And on average, you're looking at from the time that you provision a new EC2 G2 instance to the time that it completes all of its initialization checks, which is about the time that we can actually run the Parsec server and have the server come online. Uh, you're looking at about four to five minutes, all right? Again, it's pretty fast. It's really impressive, but we wanted to try to get it down faster. Uh, and so, as you may have guessed, our solution was to go ahead and launch these, provision and launch these EC2 instances ahead of time. And then uh, when a new request comes in for a user and wants to use a gaming machine, we have these instances sitting in each region. They're stopped, they're ready to go. They've already been provisioned. We know we have the capacity for it. And we simply use the AWS EC2 user data to reconfigure the instance on the fly. And we tag it uh, with the user's ID. Uh, one, one nice little feature that we use is that AWS billing actually allows you to uh, segment your billing reports by arbitrary tags. So we've been able to basically get a user by user breakdown of bandwidth usage, EDS usage, uh, EC2, vault, uh, EC2 instance usage by user ID, which has made it super which has made uh, it super easy to just kind of figure out who owes us what at the end of the month. Um, so you can see here is a diagram. We might have like three instances ready to go in US East 1 because we know that that's our highest volume region. It gives us the flexibility to really scale back and or scale up in case that we you know, anticipate being, there being a, a large volume of signups, people who want to start using this cloud feature. So this really gives us the flexibility to address those, those needs ahead of time and plan for them and to really deliver that you know, sub one minute start time that we're really after. So nothing flashy, but just kind of building the infrastructure to support that uh, kind of shows what you can do with AWS if, you're, if you just you know, work with it a little bit. Uh, the second problem, which I, I was not aware of, but uh, is a really, really fascinating problem is the fact that when you restore an EBS volume from a snapshot, uh, which is the case when you provision a new EC2 instance from an AMI, the AMI actually contains a reference to a, an EBS snapshot, which is stored on S3. And the way that EBS uh, accomplishes this and the, the fast launch times is that the EBS volume essentially acts, acts as a local file cache, a local block cache to the, to the S3 snapshot. So what that means is the first time that you access any data block on your EBS volume, you actually have to make a full request to the snapshot on S3. Uh, and so this, this can be killer to performance. In the first 10 to 15 minutes that you provision an instance that's backed by an, EB, by, by an EBS snapshot, performance is terrible. I didn't notice this because, you know, until I started working at Parsec, I've just been working with Linux instances that were running headless, they're running servers, you know, you're not really paying attention to disk I.O. right out the gate, right? Because you might be, you know, you're just like provisioning instances to scale your cluster in response to some event, right? You're not really, you're, you just want more instances up. You don't really care about the performance right away. But this is actually really obvious when you try to connect to one of these instances that's just started up and you're in the Windows, you know, UI and like everything takes forever to load. And so you can see this in this graph here. So CloudWatch monitors your read latency from your EBS volume. And you can see that when I first start up a non, like, like a brand new uh, EBS volume from the snapshot, you're looking at read latencies of 20 to 50 milliseconds, which is killer. But I mean, it makes sense if you realize that it's a whole web request S3 going on behind it, right? And obviously, like as you access blocks in the disk, Read latency drops to what you would expect, right? Like one millisecond, sub one millisecond, right? But it was this key, like first experience that we really were concerned about. We really wanted users to have a fantastic experience from the first time they they launch one of these instances, right? So uh, we just came up with a drop dead simple solution. We literally wrote like a C program that is like 85 lines long, and it just sequent. We already have this pre warming step when we launch these instances in the, in the region, and we just kind of like set them to dormant, waiting for another user to come online and request a new instance. 
So we just took advantage of that and we run this program that literally just sequentially reads the entire root volume. And it forces the EBS uh, volume to download all of the data, to copy all of the data blocks from S3 so that they're sitting there local on EBS. Uh, again, not very, not very uh, complex, doesn't have to be, but the results, I think, speak for themselves. The lag goes away immediately. You'll notice that the, the scale over here is not 20 to 50 milliseconds. We're in sub-millisecond territory from the, from the get-go. Um, so just by adding this simple startup script, you know, it took us like less than an hour to write, we were able to cut this EBS performance penalty by an order of by two orders of magnitude, um, and so now you connect to a Parsec machine. It's been pre-warmed. All of the data, all of the data blocks are local, and it just it's as if you booted up your machine that's like sitting under your desk. So it's pretty. I think it's pretty cool. And so yeah, the result is that no matter what, we, we support a lot of different devices. We support Raspberry Pis. We support uh, Mac. We support Windows, of course. Uh, we have preliminary support for Android, uh, so you can actually game from your Android device. We're still figuring out the controller situation there and how you actually move a mouse around, but uh, it works. Um, and it's, it's really quite amazing. Even on uh, 4G LTE connections, you can stream uh, in real time. So uh, I have a video to show you, show you this in action. I'm not going to risk uh, trying this on the, uh, on the AWS Wi-Fi, but uh, the video should give you an idea of, of what sort of experience you can expect. <laughs> so yeah, here's, here's Benji, he's on his Mac. Uh, he's on his Mac laptop at home. And he is connected to a Parsec machine and uh, playing Overwatch. And one cool thing about this is that the machine keeps running in the cloud. So if you connect from another device, like your Android phone, or like you're on the go, you're in like a, a, a bar somewhere, the game just picks up, or like the state is still like, you know, where you left it off. So there's really. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I thought that was me. Uh, so yeah, oh, um, yeah. So that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of my talk and uh, what what we were uh, what we were excited to show you about today. Um, and yeah, so again, thank you to AWS for hosting us. Uh, this is just a taste of some of the cool stuff we're working on at Parsec. We've got lots of big plans for spot instances, for data migration, for uh, all sorts of stuff to make this even more cost effective, more performant. And uh, yeah, we've, we've just been having a blast with AWS and happy to answer any questions you might have.